You did not read the last part. So I'm going to give a talk on Jimbo drumming using Python. That's supposed to be two volunteers, huh? Nobody's perfect. So, as the slide says, I'm going to ask for two volunteers from the audience. Anybody here knows how to draw? Well, choose somebody at random. It's okay. All right, I will be the player. Nice. Draw anybody who can draw. An artist. Well, here's the thing. I am a drummer. I don't know how to draw. See that? I really don't know, don't know how to draw, but I know how to make him go left, up, down, and right. And by the end of this talk, I'm hoping that everybody will learn how to make a game. Now, as I said, even though this is bad art, it's still a drawing that we can use. Hopefully, we can get somebody to help us draw something. Now. There's a cave over there, and let's go. Oh, come on. There we go. Who here plays video games? Nice. More than half the rooms. Uh, what game is this? Nice. What game is this? And now earlier I asked who here plays video games, and apparently half put up their hands, but now everybody knows the James. Really, you're all gamers, you're just a same. No, I take that back. You're just shy. <laughs> I am Mr. Vardes, and I'm a video game for drumming hobbies. I'm a Philippines, as can be seen on my shirt. And I use game for drumming to teach, well, for drumming. Usually object-oriented for drumming. In schools, when they teach object-oriented for drumming, it's usually class animal, class cat, class dog, and so on. I like to trick people into thinking that I'm doing something, but they're learning. I like to trick people into learning. My website is mrvaldez.ph, and you can find my GitHub at github.com, mrvaldez, and that's my Twitter account. What do we need to know to make a game? A game library. We're going to use Pygame. I need to teach how to do Py programming design patterns as a game loop. And, like I said earlier, RP teaching OOP. Oh, no. <laughs> now, everybody who's in here is now trapped. Because by the, by the end of this talk, we're all going to learn maths. There's no escape. Here are different Python, pod, Python game programming libraries, such as Pygame, Arcade, RenPy, Bidlet, and lots more. You then create games for the PC, Mac, iOS, and Android. There are some game engines that use Python, such as the Koto engine, Cocos 2D and Pandas 3D. Like I said, um, what's this word? We're going to use Pygame in this presentation. You don't actually need a dedicated game library. You can use other libraries. You can make it in Kiwi, a, a graphic user interface library uh, framework, Django, Flash. Or you can use Curses. No, not Dyn of Curses. Curses is a library for tets I for tonsor, for the tets, for this one. Let's start with the first part. What is a game loop? It is an infinite loop. What's an infinite loop? A loop that doesn't end. It does never never end. So when you play a game, first the game world is set up, 
that's why it takes a long time to run your game sometimes. If it's a huge game, it takes a while. And then we have this game loop. The game loop has the input. So the user can put in the input, update the game world, and then draw. Each iteration is called a frame. Who heard of 60 frames per second? Nice. So that's the magical number that all gamers should use. It means the game loop is running 60 frames per second. If it dips below that, well, apparently there's a problem in our game loop. Maybe the update or the draw. Let's go to OOP. OOP is used for game objects. So game objects has functions for updating and drawing. So here's our base game object. We have an X and Y for the as an uh, parameters. Uh, no, what's this called? Coordinates. Coordinates. And we have an image class, uh, image data type. By the way, this data class is new. It comes with the latest py version of Python, which was released less than a month ago, if I'm not mistaken. And I played with it. That's why I put it here. Because it's so fun. Then we generate a game object, such as a monster, inherits from game object, and we create an update and draw. Um, does a tweet check? Does everybody still tipping up? Or am I talking a little bit fast? OK, all right. When you create a new game object, you add it to a container, basically a list. And every frame, we update and draw its game objects. Oh yeah, mathematics. I think everybody loves this. We're going to have two topics in mathematics, the coordinate system and the collision system. What is this? Uh, there we go. Wow, your you dice are faster than my animation. <laughs> what does this mean? What does one zero mean? The one is the one on the x-axis. x-axis. And zero on the y-axis, correct? Why is this important in video games? Because this is where we put our game elements. If you don't play video games, behind that is just a bunch of numbers telling which game object appears where. where. This works on 2D, 3D, and since although nobody can play in 4D, you can also make a 4D game if you want. So, some y axis origin at the bottom left. So earlier, that is 1, 0, 0 on top left. Some game libraries have the zero coordinate for the y-axis on the lower left. If you want to change, if you want to flip the coordinates, just use height minus y. It's very simple. What are these? That's I, the pixel. That's the, the pixels on the screen. Yes, the screen resolution. So when somebody says 640 by 480, that's actually a resolution of 640 on the x-axis, 480 pixels on the y-axis. With me so far. See, maths is easy. It's just a bunch of numbers. Collision detection is the algorithm used to see if two sprites intersect. A sprite is basically the image of a game object. We have here an Italian plumber from Japan and a dinosaur. I think I did that right. I ask everyone, are these two sprites touching? Ah, you're all human. Let's ask the computer. Computer, are these two sprites touching? No response. How come? I mean, the computer can't speak. Yes, a computer can't speak. Well, there's a Python library for that. <laughs> but yes, a computer cannot understand human language, 
but it can understand numbers. We then use math to detect if they touch. To simplify, the spread is If the rectangle overlaps, it means there's a collision and an event is triggered. In this case, the event is the plumber loses. Everybody was drawing on, had a problem with maths. I wonder why. Here's the formula to check if two rectangles have collided. But it's, I'm not done with that. <laughs> now, I created a podrum. Uh, wait, sorry. This formula expects that 0, 0 is on the top left. If you want the formula for bottom left, it's basically we change this for the y axis. Like that. Now, this is a little bit hard to parse, hard to read for us humans. So, I made a simple podram to showcase. So, if I move the dinosaur, let's see there. I move the hero, and that's him. So, let's move the hero here. Formula is correct. Uh, 960 plus 87.3 is. Uh, I'm making things harder for everyone. <laughs> hmm. uh, let's try 900. 910. I think that's easier. 910 plus 87.3. 997.3. Is it greater than 670.0? Yes. And this is batch 2 X. We do the same with on the right side, then the top and bottom side. Any questions here? Congratulations, you now know how to do maths. A key factor in good game design is to realize that you can use multiple collision detection. Uh, wow. Can you guys see the bots? No? All right. Uh, what's I'm afraid of this? Oh, no, that's not it. 2008 Picon APAC and what do I do? What did I call this hit bots? Um, no, uh, game loop. Uh, uh still can't be seen. There's bats. You didn't all see the bats, right? No? Uh, darn it. It's a little. Okay. So this sprite actually is composed of many, many hit bats. If you have good hit bats, so remember earlier I said that to simplify collision detection, you made it into a rectangle. If you have many hit rectangles, hit bats, you can do something like this, in which two characters are basically miss each other. But, if your hit bots is large, like this one, even though they did not connect, you can see that they did not connect, they still hit each other. So there's a part of game design here. In addition, you can also make some collision batches differently sized from the sprite. So there are, I'm sure everybody has played uh, Andre Bird and hit, it hit the pipe exactly by the pixel. Some game designers would make the hit bats smaller so that it would be more fun. Mario is one of those. I'm not saying that Mario is fun, more fun than Andrew Bird. Let's make a game. Remember earlier when I said that I need a volunteer? Player, artist, somebody who didn't draw. Somebody who didn't draw badly. 
who somebody who can draw worse than me come on anyone we only have less than 45 minutes to make our game so any volunteers any teachers in i think those guys are volunteering all right one of you are volunteering go all right why you both fight uh, which one would go in front let's start making our game first i'll call you in later let's make a code like i said this is a live coding session and hopefully everybody can see import pygame string resolution is let's make this 640 by 480 And we're going to make our display by sending it the string resolution. Next, we're going to do our infinite loop. And we just want to, what should we do with our infinite loop? Update. No, display, update. Yeah. So what we're just doing is create a 640 by 480 game and all it does is update. What does it look like? It works. That is 640 by 480. It cross. It's not responding. <laughs> what do we do if something is not responding? Control R delete. <laughs> See, not responding. Now, some of you might be curious, well, why is it not responding? It's because our operating system is asking our podram, are you all right? 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 And we're not responding. That's exactly what I said, not responding. So let's respond. I, uh -huh. If event type, I hope I did this right. Uh, there we go. And look, no more problems. No more crashes. No more not responding. It's works but of course we deleted the display because we quit here and we exit this doesn't make sense all right there's more than one way of doing this so we didn't do it this way and move this down here. So if we exit, it quits. Right? Huh. Um, everybody, you should know your IDE. I saw some people were surprised that I was able to do strange things like this. You need to learn your IDE, everyone. Images. I need somebody to help me paint. So who's our lucky volunteer? Come on, we only have... All right, so here's the mouse and your... Go! Okay, you're going to draw a hero. It can be a character, a spaceship, or something else. A tank, whatever you want. Whatever I want. An anime character, I've seen them all. Spaceship. What, what can I do? <laughs> you can make a stick figure if you want. <laughs> so... You might be surprised why I use 
you all might be surprised why I'm using Microsoft Paint instead of the fancier Paint.net or Paint 3D or Photoshop or whatever you have. <laughs> Just one simple reason. A lot of people who want to make game procrastinate. They say to themselves, I need the perfect art. I need the perfect sound effect. And they wait and wait to, to, before they then buy fancy pens and anything before they start working on their game. I'm showing everyone you don't need fancy equipment. You just need a mouse and nice pig. Nice drawing. You just need a mouse and... Yeah. Are pigs ears like this? No. I hope they are. Go, 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 go. It's all right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Stop. All right. I think that's that looks good. All right. All right. Thank you. Bye for that. What's your name again? Uh, tell everyone your name. Hi, I'm Ishon. Hello. Thank you. And thank you, Ishon. Um, we named this Hero that PNG. Let's do. Hero. Five game image load. I swear, I play. I've done this presentation so many times. I basically I memorize what to do. So it might look. It might look like I'm messy. In 2D game programming, the, the term for adding a sprite into, mem into video is bleep. What does bleep stand for? I forgot. <laughs> Any chance you know? I seem to remember it's an actual name, but. Background uh, light. Oh, there we go. Too big. <laughs> Let's make it smaller. Oh, oh, wait. Wow, that is big. <laughs> huh. You know what? Let's make our screen bigger. What resolution do you guys want? And. This is the state of the entire... Oh, all right, not bad. Mm, I'm a horrible person. There we go. So we have our pig, our hero of the day. It's still a little bit big. So let's resize. 50% should be good enough. There we go. I ask everyone, I want to go all the way there. What do I need to do? The edge coordinate. Yes, correct. So every frame, we're going to move the hero position. What in index number? One. Minus or plus? Plus. Let's just say 1. No, you know what? Let's plus made it 10. No, let's made it 100. So, hero position, every update, move index 1 by 100. Oh, that's weird. Maybe 100 is too fast, and we don't see it very well. No. All right. Uh, well, that's answered that question. But it doesn't answer my question, because I want the P to move over there. What's the bug? Yes. So let's try zero. And there it goes. Yes. So I just, you've noticed, it leaves behind a trail of white stuff, because, please don't let me, don't kick me out. <laughs> because our background is white. 
So what do we do? There's, we didn't do a lot of things. The easiest is to clear the screen. So we then fill it with 0, 0, 0, which is, what is 0, 0, 0? What color is that? White? Black? RGB? We'll never know unless we try. That's the fun thing about Podramin. You won't know until you run it. Uh, sorry about that. It's supposed to be display. There we go. Still not that perfect. What's the problem? Transparency. So let's add a little bit of transparency. There's two ways of doing this. I can open a proper paint application and make this into a transparent, uh, this part as transparent. Or I'm going to do what all video games do, which is add a color. The color is I uh, what two five five, two five five, one two eight and one two eight. I think oh you didn't see it. It's a great color. There we go. So that part will become transparent if we set the color key to two five five one two eight and one two eight. There we go. Easy peasy. Next, we're going to add some controls. Uh, player, I'm going to call you in a bit. We need, so, keys is, try to buy game, keys get press. So we're going to get the keys that were pressed. If the keys is, Left, right, down, and up. Question, question four. For left, what do we need? In that, what? Plus or minus? Minus. For right, is this correct? For down, what in that number? One. And I hope everyone was paying attention. What should we put here? Plus. Plus. And this one would be? Minus. Index, index one. Player, please come over here. Uh, tell everyone your name. Uh, my name is Kuban. Kuban. I hope, uh, that, Kuban. I hope that was picked up. So the buttons. Oh. Uh, key. There we go. Buttons are up, down, left, right. Okay. Is it working? Mm, it's not working. It's not working. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's my fault. Hmm. Uh, game is. I'm sorry. This is a bullion. So keys, key that get pressed returns a list of bullion, and you can check if it's left, right, up, down is. Try all four buttons. Okay. Start with up. Up. Down. Down. Up. Up. Down. <laughs> left. Left. Right. Right. Left. Left. Does it work? Oh, that's so difficult, yeah. Yeah. So you oh. Wow. Oh. No trust. Okay, so our tester is having too much fun, let's kick him off. <laughs> you'll you'll be back later. Very simple. I'm hoping that everybody still understands the steps that we've taken. Yes, question. I'm not trying to connect. Like the files for, like the imports high game, but like the base Python doesn't have it. Ah, uh, uh, you have to pip install? Yeah, install from the high game website. Okay, I'll check with you later. I see that you're looking at the source code already. I asked earlier, and apparently a lot of you are students, here's a tip. When you repeat code, just as this number one, this is hard coded. What if I ask you, if I say that the game is too slow, the character is too slow? You have to change four things. What if 
you also need to change the monsters later. So, you all need to learn how to soft code your variables. We do it this way. So it's easy to change. Let's say I want to make it to three or something. Now, we have our hero. Video games are violent. We need an enemy. I need another artist, please, or the same artist. I, we need enemies. Go on. Yeah, you can make violent video games or fun video games. It's up to you. But I'm a horrible person and I'm teaching some students. Hmm? Put just knife, okay. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it looks like? <laughs> and then, is it black color? Go ahead. My game allows for colors. I'm also I'm color blind, so it's hard for me to say if the color is correct. Color one. Click on the color, color one. Okay, no, I want it to be brown. Yeah. Right click on color one. Then. Right click. Mm -hmm. Right click. There you go. You want to put your name in it? <laughs> That's what I would do in, with an instrument of destruction. Put my name on it. <laughs> but, uh, whatever that is. <laughs> I'm just gonna pretend that is spaghetti and you're cooking spaghetti. All right, let's go. Let's make our enemy. I'm uh, just gonna move this so that I hope everybody can still see it. Now, if you've noticed, I'm not copy pasting the code. Another tip for everyone, if you're learning something new, don't copy paste. Just type it in, unless you're a professional like me. <laughs> so I'm going to copy paste this one. Well, I'm going to put the enemy at 3,000. And let's not forget to bleed. Here we go. Oh, where is it? It's all the way here at the land past a thousand. Let's add, let's make it 20. Let's see how it looks like. Ready? <laughs> Too fast. And there it goes again. Uh, by the way, that's the reason for that is because it's an integer and it drops around. So let's make it lower. Let's make it 10. And it's still too fast. Well, the reason it's fast is because we are doing an infinite loop and nothing's making the loop stay at a constant 60 frames per second. This is actually more than 60 frames per second. We need a clock. And we need to tell the clock to tick 60 frames per second per iteration. And there we go. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> uh, now it's a little bit slow. Let's slow Tracy. Let's slow for 120 frames per second. All right, that's better. <laughs> Question for everyone. What if I want 10 knives? Copy paste, great idea. So, NEV, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Or if I want 100 of them, let's do it 100 times. Yes, we're gonna make a list, and we're going to make it even better. We're gonna use the magical object-oriented programming that we've all learned from school, I hope. 
<laughs> I heard that. Uh, image is equal to. If you all notice, this is basically the game object that I shown earlier. We're going to put update. What does pass mean? It's an empty. It's basically an empty code block. Okay, so let's make an enemy who is a game object. You can download this on the online after this. Uh, enemy.png. There we go. So we have, we now have our enemy. Let's see. Uh, enemy position is not defined. How come? Uh, you know what? If if it doesn't work, just comment it out, and it will work somehow. See, it doesn't work. Hmm. So let's also get rid of that. Hey, it works! Where's our enemies? It's not here. We need to instantiate. Yes. So what do you call a group of enemies? Enemies. Um, another tip for everyone. If you're using a list, it should be in the plural form. And your elements should be in the singular form, your iterator. Um, we're going to iterate. Uh, what was our original? I forgot. Give me a sec. 1000. Okay. Okay. And every frame, we need to draw its enemy. And update. One thing to note is that you separate separate the update and draw part of the game. That way, if your your game is slow, you can skip basically drop the frames, but your update is still steady. Um. Argument one was self image draw. Hmm. Oh, I did it backwards. Sorry. See that? Nobody's perfect. That's why Podramo is created manuals. There we go. There's our enemy. Let's return the color keys. And there it is. Next, we all talk, talk about this. We want to update ads. And we're going to we're going to move it back uh, to the left every frame. There we go. Now, if you all notice, we made a lot of code to do exactly the same thing that we did before. That's called refactoring. And it's one of the weird things. If you're refactoring, make sure that after you refactor, it's still the same and the behavior is still the same. Now, let's add a thousand. No, that's too much, right? Let's just start with 10. There we go. So 10 enemies. It's not very scary. Why? Correct. They have the same uh, XY coordinate. So let's randomize it. A random integer between 1,000 and 5,000, and random numbers between 0 and, let's just say, 500. Let's see how it looks like. <laughs> It's boring. I want a thousand. 
<laughs> Perfect. And do you think that's too much or let's just continue? All right, let's continue. Uh, for the sake of speed, if you all noticed, there was slowed down when there were a lot, right? The reason for that is because we are using PNG, so we need to convert it into a format that is compatible with PyGem. So, so it's relatively faster, but not as fast as it should be. But that's part of the optimization of a game. That takes a while. There are some tricks on, fits on this, but I'll leave that as an assignment. So let's start with 10. What's next? The collision. The, collision, the math. The perfect math that we, were, that we wish we could remember. So the, the collision is over here. For enemy in enemies. And but one position has to be the hero position, the size, uh, that size. Now, one of the things that you should do is check if this actually works. We then made it complicated by putting in code to delete the uh, objects. But we should start step by step. We should start small. So if there's a collision, just print collision. Very simple. Mm -hmm. uh, that size, uh, all right, image. Here we go. So is there a collision? Of course I miss. Amazing, I'm a good gamer that I miss. There we go. You can see that there's a collision. That's proof enough that our code works. Now if there's a collision, let's delete the enemy. After you remove an element from a list, you need to go back to the top so that you then go to the next. Okay, let's see what happens. Pew, pew, pew. Okay. One of the things that you might have noticed is it's, it's not that close and still that's hit. So, what's the problem there? The, the hit bots is too big. See? So if we did it something like this, it would still connect, right? So instead, we need to move this around. Same with the hero. Oh, our hero is already perfect. Now, this is part of the live coding. I asked the audience, what do you want to do next? <laughs> the pin dies instead. Okay. So how do we do this? Somebody describe to me how the game should work. If if collision the pig uh, changes the the changes in the period, the spike changes in the period. Hmm. That sounds complicated, but hey, we have an artist who then draw that. So. I need art to draw what it looks like. Uh, the unhappy hero. Uh, okay, I'm going to show my skills in drawing. <laughs> there we go. I need some tears. Okay. 
uh, if you guys notice, I'm, I'm using my trackpad because like I said, it's not on how good or bad your art is as soon as you make it. So, the easiest way, or rather, the correct way here is to put our hero into a game object. But we only have less than 15 minutes left, so I'm going to cheat. Hero is alive, is equal to true. And if hero, hero is not alive, wait, if hero is alive, do this. But if there's a collision, there we go. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, very fast, very efficient. We can fix that later. I'll you can fix it later after this. We need the, what's this called? The pig, uh, the explosion. Again, I'm a professional, I then copy paste. You're, you all are not allowed to do this. Okay, uh, we have the hero and happy. So basically, we created uh, two kinds of hero. Like I said, the correct way of doing this is to make a game object. So if the hero is no longer alive, we display the hero and happy using the same position. Wait. <laughs> sorry, I, I should have called for the tester, but <laughs> sorry, I was. I've noticed a bug already. There should be a color key for unhappy. All right, uh, help me test again. There's too many knives, Go. All right, that's it. Was that fun? All right. <laughs> I see you are also a hacker. <laughs> Out of bounds. <laughs> All right. As a tester. So when, when I, the tester is my customer. Uh, this works even in other, in other industries like business industry, podrami industry, bank industry. You have to ask the customer, how do you feel about that? Oh, I'm happy. And you're happy. I it's, feel alive. Is there anything that you want more? Uh, is there something missing from this game? Something missing from the game. Audio? But if I only got 10 minutes. Ah, Charlie is accepted. So... For drumming and then... So there's a like... A, there's a pod drum. Oh! It's not connect. I hope the audio would pass through, but I feel it won't. I really feel it won't. Okay, so there's a library. I really hope this works. Oh, it's not working. There's no audio for HDMI. I will try. Sorry for those who are wearing headphones who's gonna listen to this. Nothing. It doesn't work. So normally, you would use this. This is a generator for sound effects. It's called BFXR. And you take this, there's a downloadable version or web version. file, And then the code for that. What was this called? Uh, base code. So I have a cheat sheet because I can't remember everything. And for sound effects is, this is the code to play sound effects. Uh, since we can't play sound effects on my machine, it's something that I didn't realize until now. Let's do it the other way. Beep, bop, beep, beep. Ah! It works. I hope you're happy with my... I hope you're happy with my product. All right. I need another tester. 
who's going to ask for a feature. Because we still have apparently 10 more. How many minutes? Okay, let's go. 10 more minutes. One more feature. This is how feature creeps happens, everyone. <laughs> you just start simple. Yes. Uh, the, sorry. Uh, so that you didn't see. Do you have a feature that you want? Cube, I guess. A. A, uh, a square. A square, why? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh. Walls. A what? Walls. Walls. Uh, that's. Alright, let's put some walls. So if you've all noticed, there's an exploit that they then somehow get on top, out of bounds. <laughs> so the code for that. Basically, before. Where's the update? After updating the, after moving the character, we're going to check the position. Okay, I totally differ that about this one. Uh, there's a zero and hero. So what this syntax does is, if the hero goes below zero, it's going to become zero. So it had go down. So even if I hold left, I, it's not going to work. Let's do with the top. And then the, the right side, hero position. And let's put this string resolution. As you can see, uh, it's very helpful not to not do hard code. Okay, let's go right. Okay, uh, there's a bug. Uh huh. All oh, right. At this. Turn right. I uh, ignore that. It's a bug. It happens once in a while. And upwards, down doesn't go past down. See, hi. And right is over here. So what we need is to dead. The width and the height. You can't escape from math. You need math. So we go right and hold down. You have to believe me that I'm holding the down button and the right button on this one. Uh, I've seen a lot of bugs, but hey, that's another feature. Any other features that you guys want? We still have seven minutes. Power up. Mm, Health. Health. All right. That's. When the pig dies, it stops moving. It stops moving. All right. That first. If the pig ga dies, it stops moving. So if hero is alive, he then move. Else, nothing happens. So I I'm, I'm moving the button and it doesn't work. Okay. There's an obvious bug here, but in the interest of time, let's just pretend that's part. That's kids up. All right, life form. While, while hero is alive, does that also work? Use while hero is alive. Mm -hmm. Then the con then the movement controls the <coughs> inside the wall. Is will that also work? Yes. Um, we're basically saving on time. Normally, we would put all of this in the game object for hero. Yeah, game hero should have its own is alive of variable instead of hero is alive. We're trying to be to, to be optimized. We're trying to be efficient. Yes, right, efficiency. Uh, thanks, Mr. Sulivades. Okay. Uh, beside teacher's request, I think we open for questions. Do you guys have any questions for him? All right. All right. Go. Uh, how do you test the code you write? I mean, could you use the regular frameworks for testing? For Py Okay, so yes, there's a stack overflow question that I wrote a long time ago asking on how to do this. So you mm -hmm. can just look that up. There's also, do I have internet? There's also some articles online on how to do this. Basically, uh, they have a stage, a, okay, a map that is built the avatar 
the commands the event is move forward it should move this distance they put a they put an object in front and it shouldn't move through things like that however in the game industry people don't test unless it's the game engine it's one of those well time is money we need to raise the game yes function do you use when you're like using uh, uh, a different controller like the joystick you were using? Alright, uh, so this is the code for joystick. First, by the way, this is on GitHub, on my GitHub so you can look it up later. You need to initialize the joystick. That the first joystick, because there's it's a possibility there's more than one. And you need to check if the button has been pushed or if the axis has been moved to the left, to the right, up and down. And that's basically it. Yeah. Any more questions? Okay, okay, uh, sorry, one, one last thing. So, sorry about this. I've shown Pygame. Earlier this month, there was a new game for drumming library called Arcade. And I've written my presentation on Arcade. So it's still early, but I think Arcade is better than Pygame. Pygame uses SDL3, if I remember correctly. And Arcade uses OpenGL. And so maybe in, in the future, I'm going to switch to Arcade. But you can also check that out. Okay. Guys, thanks. Guys. All right, thank you. Okay, thanks guys. There will be one more final talk at the main room.